What's going on guys? So today we're looking at the TRS-25 from Bushnell and this is going to be part of their Trophy Red Dot series. Now this is going to be both a review and a unboxing because this is actually my second TRS-25 that I've owned. Uh, there was a while back where they had a incredibly low price on this combined with a decent sized rebate so I ended up getting this for I think 15 bucks which I don't ever expect to see it again, but I couldn't pass that up when I saw the opportunity to get a second one. Uh, I've had one of these on one of my rifles for probably about two years or so, and I'm still on the original battery. It's never let me down. It's always run great. So, jumping into the box here, first thing you notice is a pile of random stuff popping out here. You do have a lens cloth, uh, some of the random brochures, and then the Allen wrench for tightening up the uh, mounting hardware. And then inside all the foam here, we have the optic itself. You will notice the back of the box is cut out because I did have to mail in the UPC for the rebate. So first thing things first uh, is going to be the lens covers. This is actually going to be my biggest complaint about this entire optic. Uh, these lens covers are not long-term durable. It is literally just almost like the bikini style cover. So you stretch this over the edge, one goes on each lens, and then these hold it together. The problem is, after about a year or two of use, one of these is going to break, and there's really not much left to hold that on there. So I do need to look into getting a better quality lens cover for these when the, the optic is not in use. But that's a pretty small complaint to have in the grand scheme of things. Um, now, you will see, made in China. Unfortunately, it's the case, but let's face it, 99% of the things we buy in this country are made in China today. While I would prefer to have a USA made product, it's probably going to be more along the five to $600 plus range, which I'm gonna save that for more of my high-end firearms where I'm not gonna be worried too much about the perfect quality optic. For the battery, that's going to be contained underneath the compartment under here. And that one is a 2032, uh, or sorry, CR2032. And if I remember correctly, that's actually going to be the same battery that you would use for a Apple TV remote. So they are readily available in pretty much any TV store or electronic store where Walmart's going to have that for you. So once you take out the little plastic battery blocker, we will be able to see what this looks like. Now, this is a 3MOA dot. So this is going to be a little bit tough to get in view for the camera. But I'll see if I can get that to go for you. So... There we are. So you are seeing a very large dot in the center here. It is not looking nearly that large in the actual um, optic itself, but you do see a nice, clean, clear dot. Now, one of the things I've noticed with this is it's actually a lot less on this one than my first one, is that the first one I had had a very mild blue hue to the lens. This one I'm noticing is actually a lot clearer. So they've actually upgraded the quality here. And it appears that they've actually toned down whatever was causing that blue hue. Now, it was never something detrimental in any way. But it was something to be mindful of. Because if you're not used to it, it can throw you off a little bit at first. Um, and then for the windage and elevation adjustments, you do have the terror caps up here. And I believe those are quarter MOA adjustments, but I'm not confident on that one. Hopefully it does say on here. It actually does not on here. So, disregarding any comment about the MOA adjustment level, it just tells you right and left and does not tell, oh, sorry about that. One click is one MOA. So that'll be one inch at 100 yards, which for a red dot, that's more than plenty of fine adjustment. For a magnified optic, I'd be looking for at least quarter MOA, but one MOA for a red dot is sufficient. And then same thing up and down is on the top turret. Now the good thing is they do have a decent size O-ring in there, so it's actually gonna keep any water out of there. Now, overall, if you're looking for something cheap, you can't beat this little Bushnell TR TRS-25. It's fairly comparable in size and weight to something like you would find with the uh, compact line from Aimpoint. Now, I, with that said, it is nowhere near the quality of an Aimpoint. Um, now, if you're looking at an Aimpoint Micro versus this, this is going to be good if you want something as a tide over or if you want something for, say, your secondary firearm or tertiary even. If this is going to be something you're going to be taking to classes, it's going to be something you're going to Iraq with, you're going to want to step up something a little nicer. If you're looking for a shotgun red dot or something that you're just going to be playing around at the range with, not 
anything too serious or trusting your life to, you can't beat this thing because generally speaking, you can get these for well under a hundred bucks and I've seen them many times below 50. Uh, with that said, if you do want to have the one that comes with the factory riser for an AR, those tend to run a little bit more expensive or you can just get your own riser separately and run whichever one you want so you can get your perfect height. But if you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. And as always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.